Hey, how y'all doing again? It's Craig here. Uh, gonna be looking at my personal saw today. I bought this saw back in the very early 90s uh, from a farm supply store that was going out of business. Um, I was using it several weeks ago, uh, cutting some firewood. As I was cutting, it stopped running. I thought it ran out of gas. Rather than fuel a particular saw back up to finish a few cuts that I had left, I grabbed another saw that I had and finished the cuts. Uh, went to get this particular saw back out a couple days ago. Put, went to put gas in it, only to find there was still a half a tank of gas in it. Uh, still could not get it started. My first thought was that I had burned it up. So I've already discovered what the problem was. Uh, after the fact, I thought, man, that would have been a good video to have posted on YouTube. Uh, just goes to show that how easy it is, it, is it's over to, how easy it is to overthink what may have happened or what may be wrong with a particular piece of equipment. Uh, so I actually put it back together so that I could do a video and show you guys uh, what an easy fix this is actually going to be and then we're going to see if it'll actually run so without ado we'll refocus you here on the particular saw in question and we'll get to work and I'll show you what I found in a step-by-step -step sequence here and we'll just kind of make pretend that I've never Open this up to see what the problem was, even though I have. So it's going to make it run just a little bit faster. But the saw in question, as you can see, is a Husqvarna 51cc. This is a bone stock Husqvarna. I actually purchased this saw brand new from a farm store called Quality Farm and Fleet. That was going. It was a local store that was going out of business back in the real early 90s. Uh, I purchased this saw. Uh, with a case, bar oil, two-cycle oil mix, and at the time an extra bar and chain for $250. Uh, this has been a, a really good saw. I've cut many, many cords of firewood with this saw. And um, like I said, without ado, we'll get to it, and I'll show you what I found. So the first thing... The first thing that I was going to do was take it apart, pull the spark plug out of it, uh, run my bore scoop down to the cylinder, uh, see if there was any damage to the cylinder, and if I seen any in the cylinder, then I was going to pull the muffler off of it, go through the exhaust, look at the piston, because like I said, I actually thought I had burned it up. Um, so this is the procedure that I've done. Uh, remove the spark plug. Pulled the plug out, tipped it up. I hope you can see the plug is actually really wet. But what I found was not a burn up saw, I do not believe. And I hope, I hope you can see this. I hope it shows up on the camera. But if you can look at that really close, you will see that there is no gap in the bridge of that spark plug. There is a piece of carbon that has lodged itself in between the center electrode and the ground strap. I am all but sure at this point that is what my problem is. So what I will do try to get this on camera if I can right there is it? Yeah, the screwdriver is a little bit too big uh, 
I'm going to pause you all for just a minute and get my little pick. Uh, be right back. Okay, we're back now. I'm going to try to try to get my little pick in here. There it is. Now, as you can see, or at least I hope you can see, try to get a little light on it here. There is a gap in the end of that spark plug now. It's actually laying right there. You can actually see it laying right there. See if I can't dig that out of there. There it is. A little piece of carbon right there on the end of my finger. And I'm going to regap this plug because it looks like it's actually a little less than 20 thousandths. So, pause you again, get my plug gapper. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back again. What I got is just a circular ramped style. As you turn it, the thickness of the ramp gets thicker. You set it in there. And that gap right there is actually less than 20 thousandths. Instead of pushing it in there, I'm going to try to, to turn that open just a little bit with a pair of needle nose pliers. And if need be, then I can tap it back closed. But I want it to be 20 thousandths. We're just a tad over 20. So I'll just take and actually just tap it on the pair of needle nose pliers there again. Okay, now that's a real tight fit. So I'm close to 20 thousandths on the plug gap. As you can see, or at least I hope you can see, yeah, that shows up real good there. There is a gap there now, so I'm going to check it for spark. This is just a little contraption that I made. Um, it allows me to actually test the spark plug while it's on the saw. Uh, just got an alligator clip on one end and a um, different style clip on the other. The alligator clip, I can clip right to the cylinder. Makes a good ground. This end here, I actually just right around the spark plug. And then no matter where you have the plug at, it's grounded. Just a word of caution with the with the bare handle like that. Don't be holding on to it as you're trying to crank it. Because if you are, you will get a kick out of life. So I hope that we can see that. Let me try to turn the plug there just a little bit so the See what we got here oh yeah got good spark I hope you seen that coming right off the end of the electrode so I'm sure this saw is gonna run now This saw has had nothing but 32 to 1 oil mixed through it since it was brand new. Nice and snug on the spark plug. Plug boot back on. Put the top cover back on.
You don't want to go too tight with these because you can actually break the plastic. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to run them down and snug them up with the screwdriver. Okay. Move my stool out of the way, readjust the camera. And we're going to, sorry about the shaking this there, guys. But we are going to do the startup. Let's see if she runs. As I always do, because there's ethanol in the gas in this area, always shake it. That way, if there's any water that's been accumulated, the ethanol, the alcohol settled out of the gas, it won't be the first thing sucked through the carburetor into the cylinder. Make sure the switch is on. Pull the choke. This particular saw does not have a primer bulb. It may or may not take several pulls to start it. Like I said, it did look like it was wet, so it's probably maybe flooded. We'll find out. started that easy. Maybe that plug gap's always been a little too narrow. Set the high idle, just pull the choke out, push it back in, high idle set on this particular saw. Okay, there you go. Just because your saw quits running or does not start, don't always assume that it's burn up because that may not be the case as we just seen. A very simple fix, take the plug out, remove the piece of carbon. Some instances it just may be a foul plug, you replace the plug and you're right back to cutting. Hope you all enjoyed. See you in the next video.